What is good, everybody? Sorry, Rick. But what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Kevin Fernandez, AKA K Fern, and wow, it has been a long time, but I'm back today again with another video for you guys. As you can tell by the title, I'm gonna be going over my very first collegiate decathlon with you guys. I'm gonna be talking to you guys about, you know, my strategy throughout the decathlon, how I felt, my favorite events, my least favorite events, I think we all know those, anything involving running is my least favorite event. But we're gonna get into depth on those types of things. And just talk about how it went overall, talk about how I was feeling. As some of you guys know, I was coming back off of ankle surgery, so it was definitely uh, physically and mentally tough, but I did it. I did the damn thing, I got it done with. And I can officially say that after three years of being a college decathlete, three years of training for it, I finally finished my very first D1 college decathlon. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of it, honestly. I didn't really know what to expect going into it. I was honestly kind of scared. I took it event by event, just listened to the advice of my coaches, my student coaches, and just like my other teammates. We got through it. So I'm gonna take you guys event by event through each one, kind of give you some background on what went down beforehand, what went down afterhand, how, how we handled everything, and how it went overall. So, let's get into it. All right, so yes, after three years, I finally finished a decathlon. We had basically a full season just with code restrictions, you know, getting tested every single week for practices, uh, checking in before meets and stuff, no fans at most meets. And so it was very different year. We finally, got to complete a multi, it felt really rewarding. So ba basically we had our multi in Santa Barbara at Westmont College, awesome track, super awesome track. So we start off the day by meeting up at Cal Poly at around like six in the morning. I got taped up, we headed on down to Westmont, warmed up and all that type of stuff. And we started the day with the 100 meter dash, one of the events that I really don't like, mainly because I'm slow. We got there, it was us, a couple other D1s like UCSB, um, and I honestly, I don't know what, what other schools were there, I wasn't really paying attention that much. But there was some like also D2 schools, some D3 schools, of course, it was at Westmont, so Westmont was there. Basically for the decathlon, and a lot of other track meets, you're not gonna be competing just against D1 schools, you compete against a lot of other schools, like D2, D3, which a lot of people don't know actually. So, we go there, we warmed up, did the whole thing, Got into the blocks for the 100. This was my very first time coming out of blocks for a race in college ever. I had never come out of the blocks ever. I did one block race in high school and that was it. And then this was of course on my new ankle. That still was really bugging me, but we got through it. Ran that in a very, very bad time. I ran an 11.99. I mean, I broke 12, but next year, of course, I'm gonna try to get in, you know, at least into the 11 sevens. Uh, I should be quicker than that. You better be quicker than that. So I started off on that note, not too mad about it. And then we went straight over to the long jump. Basically for the decathlon, you just hop from event to event. You usually have a little bit of a break in between. This was definitely like something more in my comfort zone. As a, you know, primarily jumper, I was able to transition from the 100 into something that I know pretty well. But this year I didn't have that same pop since I did break my jumping ankle. So I can't, I did the whole season off a shorter approach. Just didn't really have the same pop that I know I would. I was just trying to build up the confidence that I kept on going. So at the meet, I think I got two fair jumps and then scratched a couple. And I found myself stuttering at the board because, which I thought, I found funny because I checked my mark like three days before. But then I realized that before the meet, I looked at my phone under a note in my notes app that said long jump mark and I think it was like 98 feet or something. And so I wrote that down in my little book before the meet that has all my marks and stuff. And something was off, I, I was stuttering a lot before the board and I knew that it wasn't my true mark. And little did I know that after the meet, I looked on my phone and it said long jump mark. I looked at the date of that note and it was for junior year of high school. And it said junior year mark. And I thought it meant junior year of college. I have terrible memory, so I had no idea. So. Considering I was going from the completely wrong mark, it ended up being about six feet off. I was I was chilling with that performance. I was fine with that. So from there we went to shot put. This was my first meet throwing shot put. And 
Come on, man. Come on. That was my first meat throwing shot put. Didn't really expect a whole lot going into it. And there were some big dudes throwing shot put. For example, my teammate Dylan, I'll toss him up right here. Like, yeah. That compared to me in terms of, you know, we're pretty close, but he's got a little bit of size on me. But I ended up throwing shot uh, 32 feet, 973 meters for everybody, which I was fine with. I didn't really have like a whole lot of expectation for that going into it. So from shot, we went to high jump, which used to be one of my, you know, kind of better events when I used to have the like crazy bounce and everything. I'm normally like a consistent 6'4 guy, PR at 6'5. A whole new ball game right now, just relearning how to run, jump with a new ankle. And I went to the doctor this season because I was having a lot of ankle problems, ankle pain. The surgery went according to plan on the outside of my ankle, but we found out that I have some uh, nerve damage through the arthroscopy that they did, which is why I've been getting a lot of like excruciating pain. But that's kind of one of the things that you have to work out get through i mean life and you know sports is all about adjustments getting adjusted to different things and you know you're gonna hit road bumps but it's all about how you adjust to them so i knew that i was gonna have a lot of pain high jumping so i kind of selectively chose my height so i didn't take weight too many jumps like more than i needed to and the one thing about the deca the ca nah, blah, 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 blah. the one thing about the decathlon is that you don't want to no height or scratch any event because then you just get a fat goose egg you get a zero for that event and once you get a zero you're basically out of it you're not going to be close to like scoring whatsoever so you want to come in lower than what way lower than what you normally come in at because you get point it's dad rex uh guard dog on duty so you get points based on your times and your heights and your distances for throws and jumps and everything. So if you don't complete an event, of course, you're gonna get a zero. So I came in at like five seven, and which normally would be what I scissor kick for the very first time in warmups, but my ankle was really, really hurting. So my coach told me to come in early, shout out coach there. And uh, so I came in at five seven, I ended up jumping like five nine. my ankle was just like killing me. It was, I had it taped up. I was taking a lot of painkillers and it was still getting to me. So I kind of took it easy throughout high jump because I realized I still had another day to get through. Coach C came up to me and he was asking me if I was gonna be good to finish off the day or even tomorrow. And I, I just knew nothing was gonna stop me from finishing this decathlon because while I was rehabbing my ankle the entire time, I thought to myself, wow, I've been a multi for three years and have never completed a decathlon. I'm going to complete a decathlon this year. Kind of, you know, dialed it down, ended up getting like high fives for it, which is like, a not, not like a high five, but like I think I got like 510, which was not like good whatsoever. But this, again, circumstances, so I was cool with that. And then after the high jump, we chilled out for a little bit before we lined up to do the scariest event of my entire life, the 400 meter dash. This was the first time I've ever ran a 400 and I was so scared. I get my lane assignment, of course. They, why would they do this to me? They put me in lane eight, who knows? Why did I, what did I do to deserve that? But I get the lane eight sticker, lined up in the blocks and I really, I wasn't even thinking about anything. I just got into the blocks in, couldn't hear anybody, I was just zoned in. So I didn't really have a strategy going into it, which looking back, I might have prepared for that more. My strategy really was, I mean, I lied, this was a strategy, was to just run until my legs fell off, until I couldn't anymore. So the gun went off, I just took off. I mean, I there's a video here, I'll show you guys the videos of them. Uh, I just took off and just try to tell myself that it's gonna be over soon. It's gonna be over soon. And I mean, I'll assume that the video is playing right here or something like that, or we'll look at it some other time, I don't know. Uh, and I was feeling great until the 300 meter, 330 meter mark showed up and I got absolutely smacked by a brick wall. I just lost my form and everything and I just thought to myself, get through that finish line. 
So it was pretty ugly after that mark and I lost a lot of time coming off right there, but I finished it, you know, I got through it. I ran a 56-ish, I should have been running like a 54, but I got through it, so I was happy with it. And that's, after that was when I thought I was gonna see the big man upstairs. I, I thought I saw the light for a second. My legs were dead, I was lightheaded, it was so hot outside. Wobbled over to the fence, leaned against it for a while, got some water, started feeling a little bit better, and then we cooled down, make sure, hey, athletes, cool down, one thing. I ever learned cool down don't tear muscles we cooled down we gathered up we kind of talked for a little bit then we went to a little team dinner with the multis then we got ready for the next day and the next day once again we got up early and we went to Westmont and this time I got taped I got my ankle taped up by one of the Westmont trainers which was super awesome and we warmed up and the first event of the day was my second least favorite event, the 110 high hurdles. The one thing when you go from high school to college, you realize those hurdles are tall as hell. Like who decided to make the hurdles that tall? I'm a decently tall guy, I'm 6'2", and those hurdles are like going up to my chest. So I don't know how other people are clearing these things, but they're clearing them. So my hurdle, that was my first hurdle race of college ever. And I, I, didn't, I didn't work on hurdles a ton this year. So I kind of just lined up in the hurdle race and just went for it. Just absolutely went for it. Uh, kind of skied over the hurdles a little bit too go, high, but that's Come something on, that I'll work on over the summer and going into next year. Ran the hurdles in 18.5, which I'm trying to run like a 17 something next year easily. Now that I'm gonna have like more experience and whatnot. Got through that hurdle race. We went straight to the discus throw. Once again, this this meet was a lot of firsts. This was my first time throwing discus in a meet. And my first time trying out my full approach instead of just a stand throw. Didn't really have expectation going in for discus. Uh, never had a mark in practice, really. Never, like, I don't measure it in practice. Never had a mark in a meet. So I just kind of went for it. And my form wasn't, my form wasn't terrible. I need to keep my arms, like, equilibrium extended. I kind of got too, too crazy with it and got too fast. So when I got fast, I dipped down a little bit. So my release was too far down and kind of over myself. So if I stay more balanced, uh, I can get it out a little better. And But honestly, I'm not too concerned considering that the throws are not my main focus when it comes to the decathlon, it's of course the jumps. And so I got the... I got the disc out to 27 meters on the dot, 88.7. Well, I mean, I'll, we'll take it. I'm, I'm trying to, I'd say I'd try to get the disc out to like 30s, mid 30s next year. And so going from discus, we went to vault. Vault is, you know, usually one of my decent events, like okay events. Uh, once again, we got to vault. At this point in time, I have my ankle taped up. I put another layer of tape on it. And I had a heavy duty ankle brace and had taken a couple of painkillers and drank an energy drink to get my adrenaline up because the ankle was hurting so, so bad. I, I was getting a shooting pain up where that nerve damage had occurred and that pain goes up my entire leg because it had affected this nerve in my leg. So it was, it was pretty solid pain. I think I went from a six left. So a shorter step, I usually go seven or eight left i went from six left and came in at like 12 something because once again you don't want to know height so i came in at around like 12 10 i think and just worked my way up from there Thankfully, we had our pole ball coach there, shout out Coach Pickett, who was able to, you know, like work with me, see what I needed to do, move up, tell me to move up poles and whatnot. And I actually got some footage that we'll throw up. I mean, we'll see if we even have it thrown up right now. I'll just toss it up right there. And the footage is brought to you by my lovely support team, 
mama and papa fern the best freaking parents on the planet shout out to you guys quick little round of applause all right there we go yeah the parents came up for weekend to see both days and that was super awesome that meant the world to me so i could show out for the fam so yeah they were able to scope it out from the parking lot because you know with no fans and whatnot so they stayed in the car and just watched me from outside the arena but that was super dope that they were able to come see all the hard work that i've been putting in pole vault was a good break because after I vaulted, after I was out, there was a couple more guys, so I was able to chill under the tent, drink some Gatorade, drink some water and stuff. You just get mentally exhausted. So that was a nice little kind of reset period, so it kind of allowed me to get my mind back into the game. Uh, my teammate Dylan, I think, ended up winning the pool vault. Had a huge PR at the time. Shout out to him. Killed it. Nick Gamble also killed it. He got around 14 feet. So we vaulted. From vault, we went to the second last event, which is javelin throw, which is out of all the throws, my favorite throw because you're just throwing a freaking spear. Like, that's dope. So we went to Javelin, which is an event that I don't know that well. Like I haven't practiced it that well, I'm just learning it. But again, I'm not a throws guy, so I was gonna take what I could get. I honestly wasn't too mad. I threw the Javelin 37 meters and some change, which is around 122 feet, which I was cool with. I definitely need to, you know, work on the forum over the summer so I don't tear UCL or something and just throw my arm out. I was happy with the results of that, especially after nine events. My last throw, the only thing I had in the back of my mind was, how am I gonna get through this 1500? So the last event of the decathlon, it's 1500 meters. For those who are normal US citizens who don't know meters, that's about a mile. I was slightly worried about this coming in considering that I have not ran a mile since freshman year PE. I'm now a junior in college. So a little, little bit of a time gap in between that. But you're so exhausted at it and you're so close to seeing the light that you just want to get the mile over with. So my coach handed me a five hour energy. I took a swig of that thing and I was fired up ready to go. Not to mention I'd been drinking on Celsius the entire day. Shout out Celsius. So I was amped up the whole time. And the fact that I knew it was the last event, I knew that I was just gonna go out, give it my all, and just finish the day, leave it all on the track. So I went out, and I went out quick. Way too quick. We start off in a waterfall formation, so everybody at the starting line, it's kind of a curve, but everybody is lined up together. They did final calls for the race to start, and I was warming up, like keeping the juices flowing, and I didn't hear them the first two times. So I like dang near missed the like call for it. So I ran over there and got into the, like the very last spot on the outside of the track in lane eight, very last person. And I knew that I wasn't gonna wanna hang out there because you don't wanna be running like further than you have to in the outside lanes. So when that gun went off, I took off to take off to take that front spot. So, but there's some guys there who are legit distance runners in the decathlon, like they're distance runners and they just, that's their specialty. Like my specialty is jumps. So they were taken off and I was trying to stick to somebody's hip that I could just pace off of them. And I chose the wrong dudes to do that because the first two laps, I booked it. And I realized this when I saw my coach Bailey yelling at me, dial it down, Kev, dial it down. But I wasn't even paying attention to him. I was literally just praying and closing my eyes as I ran. So I ran the first two laps and it hit me. I realized, wow, this is a little further than I thought it was gonna be. But I just kept trucking. So I trucked through that third lap, got through, I'd say I got through about half of the last lap. It was really hitting me hard. And I saw my teammate Dylan probably on the home stretch come up like right next to me. And that motivated me because I wanted to catch up and finish right up alongside him. So he came in at about five minutes, two seconds. And I finished my 1500 meters at five minutes, five seconds, which is not bad. I mean, I ran a mile, a little less than a mile in about five minutes. Uh, I really wanted to break five. I wanted to get like a 450, but I can't be mad with that. It was the very last event of the day. Finished that, almost threw up in the trash can, was up against the fence, grimacing in pain, on the verge of life and death, basically. Started getting, seeing the light a little bit, but I brought myself back down and then 
you know, gave Dylan a big old hug because, you know, we find, we finished this thing together. We trained with each other all the time. Like, that's my brother. And so we all kind of, you know, just got a big group hug going and then said thank you to the coaches. Got some pictures going afterwards. Saw my parents afterwards, which was awesome. I talked with them just about how the meet was and whatnot, and that was it. Got my t-shirt, so that was probably the biggest reward right there, free t-shirt. But no, for real. Finishing the decathlon was like the most rewarding thing. It's one of these goals that I had set three years, four years ago, when I was a wee youngin, that I wanted to get complete. And it was a goal that, a goal that became more meaningful to me after I got my surgery, because now it was something that I really wanted to complete. Was able to complete that, super grateful for it. Didn't get the scores that I necessarily wanted, but it was the first steps. It's like the first step into like the rest of the journey. The first step, you know, after a surgery, the first step coming back off of a COVID season. And I wasn't mad about it. I was able to finish it. I can say I completed decathlon, my final score. I finished in at 5,366 points. Not too shabby for my very first decathlon ever on a nerve damage reconstructed ankle. And I pulled my hammy that season, so not too bad. Overall, it was a great learning experience. It was hard, it was painful, it was awesome. It was fun, I wouldn't, it was fun. It was every emotion that you could really have all cultivated into two days. I'm excited for the future. I'm really excited to keep competing and I'm excited to gear up for my last and final season, my fourth year. Time flies, hey youngins out there, time flies don't take advantage of any year because it's gonna be over like that. I'm so proud that I was able to finish my first decathlon, especially alongside my awesome teammates who I consider my family. Really looking forward to what next season has and what the future holds for you know the, my track career. I'm excited to start making some more of these videos. It's been way too long, man. Like, where have I been at? I've been competing. That's where I've been at. I've been competing and doing school. That's a good excuse. But yes, I'm gonna be back with some more videos. Don't be shy. Go ahead, drop a like, drop a sub, do all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. K Fern, out.